In the history of politics, there are few leaders who have left an unforgettable mark on the nation's trajectory. Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, was one such leader whose impact resonates to this day. Join us as we delve into the remarkable story of Thatcher's economic reforms, a journey that revolutionized policies and redefined the course of a nation. We will unravel the secrets behind Thatcher's approach, known as Thatcherism, the implementation of her reforms and their profound impact on the United Kingdom. From deregulation to privatization, we'll explore the ideological underpinnings that shaped Thatcher's policies and the consequential successes. And of course, we will also discuss the challenges they encountered along the way. But it doesn't end there. We'll also confront the criticisms and controversies surrounding Thatcher's economic policies, examining the diverse perspectives that have fueled ongoing debates and shaped our understanding of this transformative era. Whether you're a history enthusiast, a student of economics, or simply curious about the legacy of one of the most influential leaders of modern history, and the most important female country leader for sure, this video is a must-watch. Prepare to be enlightened, inspired, and challenged as we embark on an exploration of Thatcher's economic reforms and their lasting impact on the United Kingdom. As always, Roni, your promotions, which are unbiased at all, are more than welcome. This video is the second part of our series about the Iron Lady. While I recommend watching the first part to fully appreciate the context, this part can be enjoyed on its own as well. Economic Rhapsody Make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Margaret Thatcher's rise to power was historic as she became the first female Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in 1979. Her ascent to leadership came at a time when the nation was grappling with a severe economic crisis. High inflation, rising unemployment, and powerful trade unions had left the country in a state of turmoil. The economic crisis was a significant challenge for Thatcher and her government. It created an environment of discontent and a growing demand for change. Thatcher understood that there was a strong need for massive actions to address the underlying issues that plagued the British economy. And that brings us to today's topic. Thatcher's Economic Reforms Yep, Thatcher's approach was shaped by her firm belief in free market principles and a commitment to individual liberty. She believed in reducing the role of the state and empowering the private sector to drive economic growth. Her policies aimed to deregulate industries, promote competition, and privatize state-owned enterprises. Thatcher's economic reforms were not just about economic principles, they were deeply rooted in her ideological convictions. She believed that empowering individuals and businesses would lead to greater prosperity and a more efficient economy. However, these policies were not without controversy, and their implementation faced challenges along the way. There were undoubtedly successes resulting from Thatcher's policies and reforms, such as increased economic growth and improved efficiency in some sectors. However, it's important to acknowledge that there were also criticisms and controversies surrounding the so-called Thatcherism. So as we discussed, Thatcher's approach to economics was guided by a steadfast belief in the power of free markets, individual liberty, and limited government intervention. She believed that by reducing the role of the state in the economy, empowering individuals and businesses, and encouraging competition, the UK could unleash its full economic potential. Thatcher's economic philosophy can be summed up in her famous quote, There is no alternative. She believed that the market, if left to its own devices, would allocate resources efficiently and drive innovation and growth. This philosophy, often referred to as Thatcherism or neoliberalism, emphasized the importance of private enterprise, fiscal discipline, and deregulation. Thatcher's policy objectives were clear and ambitious. First and foremost, she aimed to tackle the high inflation and economic instability that had plagued the country. That's right. Her focus on controlling inflation involved implementing tight monetary policies and reducing the money supply, in contrast to the Labour government's decision to keep interest rates lower for an extended period, which diverged from the approach taken by many other Western countries that were suffering from the crisis, such as USA, Germany, Canada, Australia, and Japan. This was a crucial step to restore confidence in the economy and stabilize prices. In addition to combating inflation, Thatcher sought to address the issue of low productivity and industrial decline. She believed that the nationalized industries, which were under state ownership, were inefficient and hindered economic growth. Thatcher aimed to privatize these industries, introducing competition and market forces to improve efficiency and drive innovation. 
Thatcher's privatization program was indeed one of her most significant and controversial policies. It involved selling off state-owned assets, such as British Telecom, British Gas, and British Airways, to private investors. The goal was to increase efficiency, encourage entrepreneurship, and create a shareholder democracy. While this approach brought benefits, it also led to job losses and social turmoil in certain industries. The privatization program faced strong opposition, with critics arguing that it prioritized profits over the welfare of workers and consumers. Thatcher's determination, however, remained unwavering, and she defended her policies by asserting that they would ultimately benefit the entire economy by promoting competition, driving down prices, and spurring innovation. Another key aspect of Thatcher's economic policy was deregulation. She believed that excessive government regulations stifled entrepreneurship and hindered economic growth. Thatcher sought to remove unnecessary barriers and red tape, allowing businesses to operate with greater freedom and flexibility. By reducing regulations, she aimed to stimulate investment, encourage entrepreneurship, and unleash the creative potential of the private sector. Thatcher's commitment to deregulation extended beyond the business realm. She also sought to challenge the power of trade unions, which she believed had become too dominant and obstructive. Her government introduced legislation to curtail union power, aiming to restore balance in labor relations and prevent disruptive strikes that had previously crippled the economy. But nothing went smoothly for our Iron Lady. Some of her policies faced harsh resistance and criticism, leading to what became known as the U-turns. In response to public pressure and mounting challenges, Thatcher occasionally reversed or modified certain policies. Notably, her attempt to introduce a local government tax, known as the Depol Tax, faced widespread protests and ultimately led to her resignation in 1990, right? Hmm. It was not the sole reason. There were several actually, but if you wish, you might consider this as a trigger for a withdrawal from the second round, following her unsuccessful attempt to win the election within the first round, as she did three times before. She was criticized for applying an unfair regressive tax that ignores an individual's income. This caused an absurd situation where poor or unemployed people will pay the same tax amount as multimillionaires. In this case, I tend to agree with the critics. This does not make any sense and just increases social inequality. How did she try to justify such a move? Thatcher claimed that being a British citizen is a privilege and not a birthright. She had two interesting claims. She said that people need to pay in order to be care of the country, to be care of their cities. This will make people better citizens, responsible, and engaged in local government affairs. The other explanation was that she herself came from nothing. She wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth and everything she achieved was done with her own two hands, so her background gives her the right to reject the claims of the poor people against this tax. But if you ask me, despite my strong capitalist beliefs, I think that this was just too much and unfair and I'm glad that this kind of tax is not common in our days. Anyway, back to the U-turns, those are a good reminder that economic policies are complex and can have unintended consequences. Indeed, Dan. Thatcher's U-turns highlighted the challenges of implementing far-reaching economic reforms and the need for flexibility in the face of changing circumstances. While she remained steadfast in her overarching philosophy, these corrections, or U-turns if you wish, demonstrated a willingness to listen and respond to public concerns. One famous U-turn revolved around the issue of European integration. Thatcher was a vocal critic of excessive European Union influence on the UK and famously declared, I want my money back. In reference to the UK's financial contributions to the European Union, her skepticism towards further integration led to tensions with her European counterparts and ultimately contributed to her forced resignation as Prime Minister. What we are asking is for a very large amount of our own money back, over and above, what we contribute to the community, which is covered by our receipts from the community. Broadly speaking, for every two pounds we contribute, we get one pound back. Considering Brexit, the British people made Thatcher look like an amateur, demonstrating their own impressive mastery of the art of U-turning. <laughs> Thatcher's leadership style and economic reforms had a profound and lasting influence beyond the borders of the United Kingdom. Her policies became a touchstone for the global economic landscape and played a significant role in shaping other countries' economic policies. Her ideology of free markets and limited government intervention resonated with leaders and policymakers worldwide who sought to adopt market-oriented reforms. 
Thatcher's unwavering commitment to free market principles set a powerful example for other nations. And it is not surprising considering the fact that under Thatcher's rule, the UK marked the fifth highest growth in the world and the highest among Western countries in its GDP per capita with 150% growth in 11 years from $6,200 to $15,700. Pretty impressive for someone with no real economic background besides co-managing of her father's grocery shop. Don't you think? I think that this was another proof that being smart and mostly bold is better than being formally educated. And just to clarify your last statement, GDP per capita is a way to find out how much money each person in a country makes on average. It adds up the value of everything produced in the country, takes out taxes on products, but adds back any subsidies, and then divides that total by the number of people in the country. Thanks for the accurate clarification. Thatcher's influence was particularly evident during the era of neoliberalism, which saw a global shift towards market-oriented policies. Many countries, including Australia, New Zealand, and the United States under President Ronald Reagan, embraced similar economic strategies inspired by Thatcherism. The wave of privatization, deregulation, and reduction in government intervention swept across nations, fundamentally reshaping their economic landscapes. Additionally, Thatcher's emphasis on fiscal discipline, or budget cutting if you wish, and the need to control inflation had a lasting impact on central banks and monetary policy. The concept of maintaining low inflation and independent central banks gained prominence globally, with many countries adopting inflation-targeting frameworks. Moreover, Thatcher's influence extended beyond economic policies. Her uncompromising leadership style attracted attention and admiration worldwide. She demonstrated that strong leadership and assertive actions could bring about transformative changes in both domestic and international contexts. Right. By the way, I mentioned her fiscal discipline earlier, but there is one remarkable case where the Iron Lady was not cheap at all and forgot for a sec of her fiscal discipline. In April 1982, Argentina's military junta invaded the Falkland Islanders to reclaim this natural resources-rich territory. The Iron Lady, contrary to her economic consultors, decided that no matter the costs, that territory will remain British. This led to a conflict that resulted in the Falklands War that lasted from April to June 1982. The United Kingdom successfully defended the islands and re-established control over them. Well, no matter if you're a trade union leader or a South American dictator, you better not mess with the Iron Lady. I guess this also increased Thatcher's support in Britain and maybe in the whole democratic world. I guess so. As a fascist dictatorship, as described by Thatcher, Argentina wasn't that popular those days. But if we are already deviating from the economic discussion, it will be cool to remind in Argentina's revenge exactly four years later, led by its true leader, Diego Armando Maradona. Dios mio. <laughs> and let's not forget the notorious goal, a few minutes before this one, which is remembered till today as, the hand of God. Anyway, it is important to mention again that the impact of Thatcher's policies was not without controversy. Of course Roni. Critics argue that her emphasis on free markets and deregulation contributed to growing income inequality and weakened social safety nets in some countries. The consequences of Thatcher's economic reforms varied across nations, and the outcomes were not always uniformly positive. It is essential to consider the specific socioeconomic contexts of different countries and the potential trade-offs associated with implementing similar policies. The global influence of Thatcher's economic reforms highlights the significance of ideas and leadership in shaping economic policies. Her legacy serves as a reminder of the enduring impact that visionary leaders can have on the global stage. Thank you Dan for another fascinating video about the greatest female country leader of modern history. And thank you Roni for joining me, it was a pleasure to host you. And more important, you guys, thank you so much for dedicating your time to watch our video. You have no idea how much we appreciate it. I will shortly upload the last video of the Iron Lady series so make sure to subscribe to get notified once it's on air and to support the channel.
In my next video, I'll get deeper into the intense strikes, protests, and social upheaval that accompanied Thatcher's dramatic economic reforms in England. It's not going to be an ordinary economic history video, but a captivating story that uncovers the struggles and triumphs of a nation in the face of transformation. Brace yourself for a gripping tale of courage, resistance, and the indomitable spirit of the British people. Don't miss out, subscribe now and be prepared to witness history in the making. In the meantime, I invite you to share, like, and mostly comment with your thoughts, ideas, fact corrections, and economic events from history that you'd like me to explore together with you. Economic Rhapsody. Talk to you soon.